After a five week break, the Powerboat P1 teams have only moved 200 miles to the west, yet in so doing, they've changed from the Euro to the Dinar and moved from Europe to Africa. As this weekend sees the second running of the Powerboat P1 Tunisian Grand Prix of the Sea. We're in the fast-growing tourist resort of Hammamet, a town which quadruples its population at the height of the season. So popular is its hot climate and sandy beaches. It's also well known for its beautiful white yasmin flowers. And of course it's yasmin tea, which is widely regarded as the cure for the odd cough or sore throat. If it's history you're looking for, then this central tip of North Africa has more than most. From the Berber tribes 1,000 years BC to the founding of the city of Carthage, from the Roman invasion to French rule, from the tank battles of the Second World War to independence in 1956, it's all here. But to bring us up to date with the 2008 Powerboat P1 World Championships, we only have to go back to the last two rounds in Malta, where rough seas made for some incredibly spectacular racing. Chris Shaw brings us up to date with the ups and downs of the championship contenders. In tough conditions, Koenig Yacht quickly took charge of the first Supersport race in Malta and pulled out a comfortable lead over the rest of the field for another victory. Here, high performance were running well in second place but under pressure from Saho until the 59 boat retired with a broken water pump. VoomVoom.com took over third. In the second race, it was the class champions that again set the benchmark. By here, high performance were being chased by VoomVoom.com until the hustler boat spun and V Ganjavian was almost thrown out of the boat. They were able to continue and regain ground, taking second place in the process. There were no dramas for Angelo Tedeschi and Aaron Chanter. They comfortably controlled the race for their fifth win of the season. After six races, Conan Yachts have a lead of 100 points now in the Supersport Championship from VoomVoom.com and by year high performance. Rough seas reduced the laps in the Evolution Endurance race. Keaton out the limits, jumped the start and were given a time penalty. But they were still ahead enough to be able to win from Fountain Worldwide. The conditions were breaking boats, including HoneyParty.com. On the Sunday, Keaton out the limits again took the lead at the start. But this time, Giancarlo Canciano and Joe Scro had judged it perfectly. Again, conditions were hard going and there were some spectacular moments and especially for Pignolo 53, whose engine bay doors had come open. 88 keep now the limit, stayed ahead of everyone in the eight laps and made it a double victory from GFN Gibellato and HoneyParty.com. The lead held by Fountain Worldwide first for boats in the Evolution points has been closed down a little. And there's a battle for third with three boats all very close together. While it was the condition of the sea that concerned the competitors in Malta, it's the temperature of the air that's worrying them here, as the temperature heads towards the 40 degree mark, which is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Chris Shaw finds out how the crews intend to cope and welcomes back a couple of boats that missed out in Malta. There is little the super sports can do about the heat. They are open cockpit, but they're in the direct blaze of the sun. In the Evolution boats, the heat builds up inside, so they need to find a way of cooling them. And Honey Party has the luxury of air conditioning. Well, it's certainly a huge problem. And I mean, we've been involved with the sport for years and know that driver comfort allows you to drive that much harder. And so we built in an air conditioning, full air conditioning system into the canopy when we, can, when we built the boat in the beginning. From conception, we were always going to have that. And it makes just a massive difference. 
Malta was a disaster for Martin Lai's Phoenix 8. They had severe engine problems there, and that prevented them from racing at all. With a new engine installed and running well, the team hopes for a travel-free weekend here. In Marseille, Sunseeker Challenger dramatically sank during testing when they hit a freak wave. With the boat recovered three days later, there was a huge amount of work to do to get it back in race order. They had to miss Malta, but they're back here for Tunisia. I know the guys back at Sunseeker have done an absolutely incredible job. Uh, when, when we think how long it took to build the boat in the first place, to then have to virtually uh, strip and rebuild it, uh, it was a re remarkable achievement and a, and a you know, credit and a tribute to them. The only thing that, that's practically stayed is, is the hull and the deck. Everything else is, is practically brand new, so this has got to be the start of the season for us now. So um, it's on from here. And there was a lot of work overnight in Tunisia for Bayer High Performance, whose boat was damaged while it was being craned down through the wet pit. It was a battle against time, but they are ready to race. Uh, we do a very good job to repair the boat. We can see that the hull is OK. The deck uh, had a big damage, but uh, we can repair uh, uh, simply. And uh, we think that the boat uh, is now OK for all of the rest of the championship. At least the sea was calm for the Super Sports Power Pole qualifying session. But the big surprise was that Kona and Miox weren't fastest with the honour of pole position going to the Italian crew of Saho. The question now is, can they turn that qualifying speed into a race day victory? Time to join our race commentator, Martin Sanborn. The boats head out towards the start line. Thank you, Tiff. Let's take a look at our course for the endurance race here in Supersport. 5.74 nautical miles. They're going to run 12 laps plus the start lap for a total of 75.89 nautical miles here in Tunisia. The teams line up based on their power pull finishes from Friday, but they're still figuring out where they want to be on the course. Trying to get closer to Conan. As the boats prepare to make their start, the pace boat on the extreme outside, the fastest boat of the day in qualifying, was Team Saho. They are on the inside, and we have a green flag. Saho jumps off to an early jump on the outside of them as Conum Yachts, but look at the boat coming up hard on the outside. That is Team Voom Voom Hustler as they now pull up alongside Conum Yachts. But Team Saho, they are out to an early lead, a great start picking up right where they left off in qualifying. That was on board Voom Voom with V. Conjavian and Gareth Williams, but coming across the wick to the inside is Conum Yachts. They're going to try to take the shorter line around the inside as they try to run down Team Saho and Voom Voom. That was on board Phoenix 8 TV with Andreas Hockeyopoulos and Martin Lai as we look at the battle for first place. Team Voom Voom moves ahead of Team Saho as they head towards the first turn. Voom Voom on the outside, Saho on the inside. Team Voom Voom moves across, giving Saho nowhere to go, so Saho goes through the wake to the outside. Team Voom Voom's going to have the lead as they go around the first turn. Diving hard to the inside is Conum Yachts. They make up a lot of ground. Going wide to the outside was Tulio Abate. On board with Team Sunsuckers, we go back to the battle for first place on the outside. Team Voom Voom Hustler holding off Team Saho, but Saho making a run. Coming up on the inside, a Hustler versus a Donzi. Mercury-powered Saho on the outside, the Yanmar-powered diesel Team Hustler. Voom Voom now getting challenged. Team Saho closing the gap as Team Saho moves ahead to take the lead here on the back straightaway with Voom Voom Hustler in second place. As Team Saho just barely marches ahead and we go back on board with Team Sunseeker. You know. Well, yeah, that's right. And he will be in Pete Little as we go back to our battle for the lead. Team Hustler now looking at a distant transom of Team Saho. Hustler trying to run him down. It is definitely a little rougher than it appears. 
Team Voom Voom Hustlers close the gap just a little bit as Team Saho tries to square off the turn, doesn't give Voom Voom anywhere to go. Team Hustler goes to the outside, trying to make up ground. Team Saho goes to the inside, maintaining the lead. Coming in in third place, Team Conum Yachts on the outside. That is Team Baya. As Team Conum closes the gap on Hustler on the inside, now within a boat length. Team Conum trying to battle into second place as we go back on board Phoenix 8 TV. This is the first time all year Conum Yachts has had to play catch up. Aaron Kiantar and Angelo Tedeschi have been the leaders in every race so far. And right now they are running in third place, trying to get ahead of Voom Voom. And they are still trying to catch Team Saho that is way out front as Saho crosses the start finish line again, well out in the lead. Getting a big bump right at the opening of the harbor. There's a big hole as all the boats go flying past. And now Conum Yachts making a move on Team Hustler, and they move into second place as they cross the start-finish line. Conum Yachts trying to reel in Team Saho now, now running in third place is Team Voom Voom Hustler. Let's go back to Virtual Spectator, take a look at the overtake as Team Saho goes around the turn in the lead. Coming around in second place, squaring the turn off to take the short line is Conum Yachts. Going to the outside, going wide is Team Voom Voom. Look at all the ground that Team Conum Yachts made up on Team Saho as they went around the turn. They've closed the distance and they're now within a boat length. Back to our battle for fifth and sixth position. Phoenix ATV holding off the big Sergio. That's a Formula Mercury powered boat on the inside of the race course. On the outside, a 38 foot carpenter with Mercury power as they try to run them down in that battle for fifth and sixth position. Back to our leader, Team Saho, well out in the lead right now. Again, holding off the Chardron of Conum Yachts, and they get a big bump as they go around the turn. Oh, and we have a boat off plane. The spirit of Port Tommaso, father and son team Benjamin and Robbie Van Reet. They are off plane with a problem. Looks like they're trying to get it fixed. Hopefully they get that boat back up and running. They've been plagued with gremlins all year. As we go back to our battle for the lead, Team Saho now has a rear view mirror full of Conum Yachts as the Conum Yachts boat has closed the gap. They are marching, trying to reel in Team Saho in his 41-foot Chadron. as that was on board the Voom Voom Racing Team with V. Conjavian and Gareth Williams. Back to our battle for the lead, Conum Yachts trying to reel them in. Our new battle for fifth position is Phoenix ATV. Looks like they're coming into the harbor, coming around the outside to go around them. Tulio Abate, oh, and Tulio Abate cannot get around them before they come into the harbor. They've got nowhere to go. They've now got to go wide to the outside and get around behind Phoenix ATV as we also see the other boat, Spirit of Fort Tommaso, coming into the harbor as well. They have called it quits for the day. Here is Sunseeker, this boat up and running after going upside down in Marseille, the first race back out for this boat. Oh, Team Saho was out in the lead and they now have the orange flag flying. They've had a problem, they are out. What a disappointment for the Saho team. This boat was running so well. The fastest boat in qualifying was out in the lead and now Conum Yachts back out where they are comfortable. Aaron Chantar and Angelo Tedeschi back out in the lead in their 41-foot Chardron. Running in third place after getting the boat put back together after a major incident by a high performance in third place. Federico, everyone, we are all excited. You have a fantastic race, and then what goes wrong? Hey, after uh, six laps in, uh, in turn in front of the start line, we broke one drives. And uh, nothing. For today, nothing. And that was Team Saho as we go back on board. Boom, boom. Please, careful, keep it in one position. Oh, the boy, left. Good boy. Oh, what's that? Oh, no, Team Voom Voom having going? a problem. Where is it? Looks like they might have knocked off their kill switch. Please, Beacon JV and Gareth Williams in Team Voom Voom running in second position. Looking over his Come shoulder, in. he's trying to keep by a high performance off. But Conum Yachts, well out into the lead, is going to cross the start-finish line for yet another win in Supersport for Angelo Tedeschi and Aaron Chantar. Congratulations to Conum Yachts, 
first place here in the first race in Tunisia. But we have a battle heating up for second place. Voom Voom Hustler, after they slow down, now has Baya High Performance coming up hard from behind. Baya High Performance dives to the inside as we go on board Voom Voom. Hey, straight up, straight for the game. Voom Voom looks to the inside, sees Baya High Performance. They are challenging as they come to the start finish line. On the outside, it is Voom Voom Hustler. Coming up on the inside is Baya High Performance. They are going to be within a boat length. They're right on their tail, but they cross the start finish line a half a boat length back. Hustler Voom Voom is going to take second place with Baya High Performance taking third. As we take a look at our results from race number one, Conum Yachts takes first place, second place to Voom Voom Hustler, third place to Baya High Performance, fourth to Tulio Abate. The Saho was going very fast and uh, we were in second position. We just uh, were waiting for any mistake uh, to pass him, but uh, if he wouldn't do any mistake, uh, it's difficult, maybe we win. So Konam Yachts have done it again, but only after a big scare from Team Saho. The question now is, can Honey Party, another boat that's just got its first pole position, convert that to a race victory when the Evolution boats return after the break? Welcome back to the Mediterranean shores of Tunisia, where the seafront crowd has just been treated to an epic Powerboat P1 Supersports race and await the start of the Evolution class. Chris Shaw checks out the form book after power pole and catches up with a fast Tunisian lady who's swapping sand dunes for sea waves. Keaton Out of Limits invited Abla Lasseur to join them this weekend. She's an accomplished Dakar rally driver who's very keen on power boating and was loving the challenge. Abla spends a lot of time in her own boat, so she jumped at the chance to get into an Evolution one and hopes if this weekend goes well, she'll be able to compete in further Powerboat P1 championship races again, maybe later in the season. Friday evening saw the power pole runs and it was honeyparty.com that topped the times for the evolution class and they were the only boat to go under three minutes. The fantastic one was second and GFN Gibilato third. Yeah, it was good. Uh, first win of the season in power pole. It was different with doing the two laps, but I think that gave us a slight advantage over the Italians. So great stuff and uh, will be good for the race tomorrow. So as the boats head out towards the start line, it's time to rejoin our race commentator Martin Sanborn for round seven of the Powerboat P1 Evolution Class World Championship. Thank you, Tiff. Let's take a look at our race course for the endurance race in the Evolution Class. 5.74 nautical miles. They'll run 13 laps plus the start lap for a total of 81.63 nautical miles. As the boats line up based on their power pole positions, the fastest boat of the weekend in qualifying, HoneyParty.com, the chief powered skater with the fastest times. They are on the inside and we have a green flag. We are underway and off to an early jump out to the outside, maybe a little bit too much of a jump. Lucas Oil, but coming up hard through the middle is the fantastic one. Now, cigarettes falling. Onboard HoneyParty.com as they run up in the front pack in the lead. Lucas Oil, second place, the fantastic one. Almost dead even side by side. Found worldwide first for boats and HoneyParty.com as HoneyParty.com marches by into third position. But we have a change of position at the start. The fantastic one moves out to the lead ahead of Lucas Oil. Two Mercury powered boats out in front, the cigarette and the skater as we go on board. Found worldwide first for boats as they look at the two leaders taking off. Lucas Oil on the outside, on the inside, the fantastic one, the fantastic one, cigarette running very well out in the lead. But here comes HoneyParty.com marching up into second place and challenging for the lead. The orange one there. Take it nice and tight. Keep on it. That's nasty. We do need the bow tank. 
That was on board. Honeyparty.com is on the outside. The cigarette jumps back out to the lead with Lucas Oil in second place. The Fantastic One followed by Lucas Oil, two Mercury-powered boats out in front. The Fantastic One making their way around definitely bumpier than it was for the Super Sport race as they make their way around the south end of the race course. The Fantastic One being chased, going through the outside, through the rooster tail. Lucas Oil goes wide. As we watch HoneyParty.com also goes wide through the turn, coming hard on the inside, found worldwide first for boats, now challenging for third place, but Honey Party holds on, powering through on the outside. Mark Pasco and Richard Carr and Honey Party not giving James Shepard and Craig Wilson anywhere to go and found worldwide. They are out ahead right now in third place. Back out to our leaders. Here is the Fantastic One holding off Lucas Oil. Coming up hard on the inside is Honey Party. The Fantastic One goes onto the outside. Lucas Oil dives to the inside, shortens off the turn. Coming through the turn next in third place is going to be Honey Party, followed by Found Worldwide. Oh, Honey Party gets a little loose as they come across, running in third place. Running in fifth place, Crane Fields Wine, Ziggy Grieve, and Gino Pashir as they make their way around the course, currently running in fourth position. Lucas Oil trying to run down the fantastic one, but coming up hard on the outside. Honeyparty.com with Richard Carr and Mark Pasco as they move into second place, passing Lucas Oil Centron. Back to our leader, the cigarette, the fantastic one, well out in the lead right now with second place, honeyparty.com in pursuit. Back in fourth position, Fountain Worldwide first for both, followed by Keaton Outer Limits, and in sixth position, GFN Giabalato. As Keaton Outer Limits comes around just a little bit too hard, corrects and gets right back on course. As our leader continues to be the fantastic one, now followed by Honey Party pushing hard on the inside. Lucas Oil still running hard in third on the outside. Fourth place, found worldwide first for votes. But a battle ensuing right now as GFN Giabalato tries to run down Keaton outer limits. Next, we have a Talcraft. They are running in eighth position. The big metamarine diesel powered boat eating up the rough waters here in Hammamet. GFN Giabalato trying to challenge and catch up to Keaton Outer Limits. Oh, the helicopter got so close they got a dose of water as we go back on board. Lucas Oil, they are now getting passed on the outside by Fountain Worldwide first for boats. Fountain Worldwide now moves into third position ahead of Lucas Oil, trying to run down the leaders, the fantastic one and honeyparty.com. What a great turn by the Fantastic One, followed by Honey Party on the outside. GFN Giabalato currently running in sixth position, trying to run down Keaton Outer Limits. Belgian third. How far behind? Watch it. Now four boat legs. Four boat legs. That was Pasco and Carr talking to their crew, finding out where the third place boat is. They are currently running in second position, but now getting challenged. Found worldwide, firstforboats.com on the inside, moving into second place alongside Honey Party. They're on the inside. Honey Party on the outside. Lucas Oil coming up in fourth position. Oh, gets the boat on its side. Great recovery by Jory and Hook. Honey Party gets out ahead of Fountain Worldwide again, back into second position. First for boats on the inside, challenging again to move into second place. Honeyparty.com on the outside, firstforboats.com on the inside as they try to run down the cigarette. Fourth place, Lucas Oil again puts the boat on its side. Bumpy waters here in Hammamet. Fountain Worldwide, firstforboats.com on the outside. They have now moved into second place. They are trying to catch up and challenge the fantastic one. They are on the outside on the north end of the race course. Fountain Worldwide, oh! Fountain Worldwide looks like they hooked the boat. It pushed them to the inside of the turn. They missed the turn. They've now got to circle back around. They were in second position. Now we have Honey Party get by, moving back into second place. Here comes Lucas Oil. They are also going to move back ahead. They are now in third place. Fountain Worldwide first for boats moves back into fourth position after they hook the boat 
trying to dive to the inside of the Fantastic One, get a little bit too aggressive. The boat steers right to the inside of the buoy, and they miss the turn. Let's take a look on the virtual spectator replay. You see the Fountain Worldwide boat dive to the inside, going around his honey party, now moving back into second position. Fountain Worldwide has to circle back around. They are going to come in right behind the Lucas Oil boat, moving back into fourth position. As we go back to our leaders, the Fantastic One and Honey Party. Oh, and a Talcraft is done. They have broken something and they are retired for the day. A Talcraft off the race course. Back to the battle for the lead. The Fantastic One now getting challenged on the outside by Honey Party right at the start finish line. Honey Party moves out to the lead just ahead of the Fantastic One. As we were just on board Honey Party, here comes Pinolo 53 currently running in sixth position as they try to make up ground from the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Fountain Worldwide, first for boats, back in fourth place, has lost their engine hatch. You can see the Ilmore power in the boat, but unfortunately, they now have to be very careful. They get anywhere near a rooster tail, they're going to hose those engines down. Oh, we have a problem, our leader. The Fantastic One has dropped out. They've got a mechanical as they go back to the engine compartment. Unfortunately, the Fantastic One running so well out in the lead. They are now out. That makes the new leader, HoneyParty.com, with Richard Carr and Mark Pasco out in the lead here in Hammamet. Honey Party's having a problem. They're slowing down as they hit the buoy. They are definitely slowing down as the boat sounds like it's coming off plane. It is slowing down. Honey Party has a problem. Oh, no, our leaders, Honey Party, and the pole setters from the power pole, they have a problem, and they are done for the day here in Hammamet as well. What a disappointment for Mark Pasco and Richard Carr. As now Pinolo 53 drives by Lucas Oil. Now moving into fifth position. Lucas Oil now in sixth. And that is going to put Fountain Worldwide first for boats.com into the lead. Running without an engine hatch, well out into the lead right now. They are the current points leaders in the championship series here in P1. James Shepard and Craig Wilson. Found worldwide first for boats.com as we go on board you can see how rough it is. GFN Giabalato currently in second place in the big metamarine. Next boat coming into the harbor, Lucas Oil. Their mechanical problem has taken them out for the day. And now Keaton Outer Limits moves into third position with Joe Scro and Giancarlo Cangiano. Keaton Outer Limits running off the pace, but they are currently in third position. The boat's coming out of the water. The race isn't over yet. What was the problem? Oh, it looks like we've got an engine mount broke. See, the engine's kind of laying on its side there. We started off pretty good and it started to feel loose. So we had to better first lap and backed off a little bit. Now in fourth position, Pignolo 53. This is the Ilmore powered skater, Max Ferrari, making his way around the race course, currently in fourth position. Back out to our leader, Fountain Worldwide first for boats has slowed. It looks like they've got a problem. The large rooster tail indicating they're not making full power. And GFN Giabalato is charging right now from second place, trying to move into the lead. GFN Giabalato challenging to catch Fountain Worldwide first for boats. As GFN Giabalato gets by and they are going to take the lead. GFN Giabalato in first place. Now Keaton at her limits is trying to run down this slowing. Fountain Worldwide first for boats.com. GFN Giabalato approaching the start finish line. They are going to take the checkered flag and the win as they come by the broken Fountain Worldwide first for boats. GFN Giabalato takes the win in race number one in the Evolution class. Second place is going to go to Keaton Outer Limits with Joe Scro and Giancarlo Cangiano as they make their way around coming in second place. 
And there are our winners in the Evolution class, GFN Gia Bellotto with Marco Panessi and Giampaolo Mantovacci as they hop into the water in celebration of their win here in Hammamet. As we take a look at our finish results in race number one, GFN Gia Bellotto takes the win. Second place goes to Keton Outer Limits. Third place to Fountain Worldwide, first for boats. And fourth place goes to Pignolo 53. Marco Panese and the team absolutely delighted to take this victory. It was a hard race for everybody, but they've got through the top step of the podium, and that is the perfect result. Bit of disappointment for Honey Party. Again, they were going so well until they were forced to retire. Yeah, another bit of bad luck. Uh, we had a, a water pump belt come off on one engine, and uh, obviously engine overheated and stopped. So, uh, yeah, it was very bad luck because we were comfortably in the lead and, uh, you know, actually we were backing off towards the end just to just, just save the equipment. Welcome back to Hammamet in Tunisia, where if you tire of the sun, sand and sea, you can either head for the sun, sand and desert, where they filmed the original Star Wars movie, or you can head here to the traditional Arabic souk, where you can find out how many camels you can get for a cameraman. But what most powerboat P1 Supersports competitors want is for Conum Yachts to swap their Chaudron boat for a camel as they continue to dominate the class. Chris Shaw catches up with all the Supersports gossip after yesterday's race. In the first Supersport race, it looked as if finally Conum Yachts would be defeated until Saho retired with transmission problems. And sadly, they're not going to be able to race today again. Another challenger that was missing yesterday, Silverline Bootsy Bullet, but they'll be back on the sea today. Yeah, it's very unusual for us not to make a start. Um, the problem was we went out testing and we, uh, we blew one of the engines. We have bearing problems. So we had to change the engine before, in between practice and the start, which we managed to do, but we were about 12 minutes late. So unfortunately, we didn't make the start. So we've been out testing again yesterday and we're ready to go today. Time to get the boats out in the water and rejoin our race commentator, Martin Sandborn. Thank you, Tiff, and let's take a look at our race course for this sprint race here in the Super Sport class. 5.57 miles, seven laps plus the start lap for a total of 45.83 miles here in Tunisia. As we go on board Phoenix 8 TV with Andreas Akiopoulos and Martin Lai as we get ready for the start of the Super Sport race on the sprint course here in Tunisia. Of course, all the boats again line up based on their power pole finish positions from Friday, but unfortunately the fastest boat of the weekend, Team Saho, didn't make the start and we have a green flag and we are underway in the final race for Super Sport and off to an early lead is Phoenix 8 TV. They get a great jump right in the middle. Watch Cardin. On board with Viga Javian and Gareth Williams in Team Voom Voom. As they come up through the middle, Team Conum on the inside, but the leader continues to be Phoenix 8, followed by Conum Yatsen and Team Voom Voom. Phoenix 8 taking some big hits, putting Martin Lai down to the floor. And early, here we have Conum moving out to the lead. They take first position, followed by Team Hustler Voom Voom in second place, driving away from Phoenix 8 TV. Conum Yachts picking up right where they left off. These guys have been tough all year long, but look at Voom Voom. Voom Voom is challenging on the outside and takes them by a nose to take the lead on the outside. Team Voom Voom Hustler. Side by side with Conum Yachts. Conum's quite close on your right, mate. 
information on where Conum is as they head towards the first turn. Out in front, second place, Voom Voom Hustler, third place. Now is Team Sunseekers. They come in from the outside, but Conum Yachts is gonna have the inside lane as they hit the first turn. They make a great turn on the inside, move out into the lead. Oh, big hit on Phoenix ATV as they make their way around a turn on this very bumpy race course. Conum Yachts out in the lead. First place overall as they make their way around the turn. Great control as this boat hops around the turns, never getting out of position. Second place, here comes Team Voom Voom Hustler, also running very well. Taking a short way around the race course. Nice turn by Voom Voom Hustler. Our wild card this weekend, Tulio Abate. This boat ran very well, taking fourth place. And the first race in air currently in fifth, and oh, Baya has a problem. We didn't see them make the start, and here's why. They are stuck out on the race course, a problem. This boat suffered a major incident on the first day where it dropped off the crane. They spent the whole day putting it back together. They did so well despite that in the first race, but they are out for the day. Back to our leaders, Conum Yachts out in the lead. Second place, Voom Voom Hustler, as they make their way across the start finish line. The bumpiest part of the race course, right at the entrance to the harbor. Uh-oh, Big Sergio has a problem also. They come off plane and stop it. Here they're getting back up and running again. That is Al and Al, Nunzio and Rosso as they make their way around the race course. Here comes Silverline Bootsy Bullet. They're also having a problem slowing down. And we go on to Sunseeker Challenger. They have now moved up into third place. Fantastic run for these guys after putting the boat upside down in Marseille, getting it all put back together and making it here to Tunisia. Silverline Bootsy Bullet still trying to work on getting the boat running in that Cummins powered boat. Here comes our second place boat team, Hustler Voom Voom, making their way around the race course, still trying to chase down Conum Yachts. This is back on board Phoenix 8 TV, as they have now moved into third place, having gotten ahead of Sunseeker Challenger. Now Silverline Bootsy Bullet is back up and running again. Whatever their problem was, they were able to solve it in that Cummins powered boat. We have a problem on Voom Voom. Their engine hatch has popped open. Acting like a big air brake as they make their way around the race course. Hold on, hold on, left, left. That is going to allow Phoenix 8 TV to get by. They are now going to move into second place. Hockeyopolis and Lai move into second place in their 38-foot formula. Back in the battle for third and fourth position now. Team Hustler Voom Voom back up and running after fixing the engine hatch, driving away from Tulio Abate. Big Sergio also back up and running after experiencing some problems. Got it solved. They're now back up and running very well. Big Sergio currently running in seventh position. And now the side-by-side -side battle as Team Hustler tries to run down Team Sunseeker. This is the battle for third place. Team Hustler just nosing past Team Sunseeker as our leader continues to be Conum. Big air at the turns on the race course. Perfect control as the boat flies around the turns. Aaron Chantar and Angelo Tedeschi as we go back on board Phoenix ATV as they are now looking in their rearview mirrors and they're seeing a whole bunch of Team Voom Voom coming up hard. Working their way back from that open engine hatch. Oh! Phoenix ATV hooks and spins the boat out. Almost tosses them out of the boat. Great recovery. Martin Lai and Andreas Hockeyopoulos spin the boat out. That's gonna cost them a position. And here comes Conum Yachts. They're gonna come across the start finish line and they are gonna win the sprint race here in Tunisia. Once again, this boat has proven to be so difficult to beat.
Let's take a look at that spin out again. As they come around, get the boat hooked, spin it out completely, almost tossing them out of the boat, allowing Voom Voom Hustler to move to the inside. Phoenix 8 has got to get up and running because now they have a battle for third and fourth place as they approach the start finish line. Phoenix 8 on the inside, on the outside, Team Sunseeker as they are now trying to challenge for third place, but Phoenix 8 will hold off Sunseeker that will take fourth position. And the results for the final race in Supersport. First place goes to Conum Yacht. Second place to Team Voom Voom. Phoenix 8 TV takes third. Sunseeker takes fourth position. Tulio Abate in fifth and Big Sergio in sixth position. Uh, incredible weekend. We have 20, 250 points. Maybe it's the world record of uh, points in a weekend. Couldn't go, couldn't be better. And uh, our satisfaction is that the, the boat never breaks. In the year-to-date standings, the leader continues to be Conum Yachts in first place, Team Voom Voom in second place, by a high performance in third. It turned out to be another commanding weekend in the super sports for Conum Yachts, but there is hope for some of the others that they could just be beaten in future races.